I wanted to quickly share a few insights that I recently had about the dual booting Windows and Linux and the difference between the file systems and the partitions because I recently configured the dual boot and I ran into a few problems and I wanted to share my insights. So first, as you might know, Windows uses the NTFS file system, whereas Linux uses the EXT4 file system. And it seems like NTFS is stricter and maybe a bit more complicated. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is that Windows really gives you a hard time when you want to shrink its partition. As you might know, you can go to the Windows Disk Management Utility and from there you should be able to shrink the partition that Windows uses. The thing is that it doesn't really work. If you right click on the Windows partition and try to shrink it, 9 times out of 10 it's not really going to give you all of the disk space that you should be able to require or reacquire by shrinking Windows to what it really utilizes. So you have free disk space, but Windows won't let you shrink the partition to this size. Now, apparently there is a solution to that, but not within Windows, because there are several tutorials on YouTube trying to work around this within Windows, with the Windows tools, but none of them is really reliable. But turns out that it can be done if you use the right tool, but the right tool is not inside Windows. So it boils down to working correctly with the NTFS file system and this is a tool that's not included in Windows and my guess is that this is on purpose. Like the people on Microsoft know very well that it can be done but they choose not to implement it baked into Windows. But with Linux this is really really simple and the best way to go about it is to use something like Gparted. Now here I want to mention that Gparted can needs to do two things as part of this process of shrinking the Windows partition. First, it needs to shrink the file system itself. And this is different from the partition because we have the partition and then after we allocate the disk size to the partition, we need to create the file system inside this partition. So the first thing a tool like Gparted does is shrink the file system itself. And this is the NTFS resizing. So it moves around files that are in this partition so that they don't use so much space. And once it's done with that, it can actually go ahead and shrink the partition itself so that you have free disk space and you can use it for a different partition. And if you think in terms of utilities or applications in the Linux ecosystem that do that, the tool that is in charge of resizing NTFS is called NTFS Resize. Turns out that there is a tool that does just that, NTFS Resize, and this is the tool that's actually able to shrink the NTFS file system efficiently. And using NTFS Resize, you can really shrink Windows so that it uses the space that it needs. And once you're done with that, you are going to need something like FDisk or CFDisk or Gparted to match the size of the partition itself to the size of the file system that was just shrinked. And when you're using Gparted, it actually hits two birds with one stone because it does both of these things. So this is the first thing that I wanted to mention. And another thing, Gparted comes bundled in um, a lot of distros, but the, I, I'm not saying that this is the best, but one of the most convenient ways to use it is the Gparted ISO. This is really, really powerful because you get nothing else. It's really lightweight. It's really easy to just throw it into a USB flash drive, something like that, and plug it into your computer and start boot up your computer using the Gparted ISO. And it basically only contains Gparted. And the benefit with using that is that you're pretty sure, first you're running from a live session and you, you can say the same thing about the uh, Ubuntu live session, but Gparted is dedicated for it. It won't mount anything. It knows that it's there to work with different partitions, so it won't mount anything. And as I said, it's very lightweight. So using the Gparted ISO, it's really easy to understand what you have on your computer, on your disks and what partitions they contain. And then you can do something like resizing the Windows partition. So if you want to dual boot, you should probably start with the Gparted ISO, shrink the Windows partition, and then it will be much easier to install uh, Linux. Now, even after you have the dual boot configuration, Windows won't make your life easy. And chances are that you are going to run into issues even after the dual boot is in place. So for example, I had uh, quite serious problems with a pin. As you might know, when logging into Windows, we can use the pin. Instead of always typing in the Microsoft account uh, password, you can use a pin, which is uh, stored locally. And it's like a more convenient way to log into your computer. And it, it gives you like serious problems once you have dual boot in place. And a few things to help me figure out what's going on was first, 
the same NTFS resize command that we talked about, the one that allows you to shrink the Windows partition, it can also give you a lot of information about the NTFS system itself. So what you can do if you are running to these kind of problems is run NTFS resize with a dash dash info flag. And this will, if there are any problems with an NTFS file system, it will let you know. So for example, I had a repeated sector or something like that. I seem to have a problem there. It was fixable. It wasn't like a real problem in the disk, but it was a problem with the file system. Now, once you do that, once you are aware of the problem using NTFS resize, you can go back to Windows and, and from Windows, you can run the check disk command. Now, on top of that, and this is something that NTFS resize will tell you, you need to run check disk on Windows using the forward slash F flag. Only this way, like it, this is very important. This is what's going to allow Windows to actually take care of the problems. And then Windows will say that, no, it cannot do it right now because the partition is mounted to Windows and it will schedule it to the next restart. And then you need to restart the computer and it will run a disk check and it will take care of all of these problems. And on top of that, another thing that you should do, like actually two more things that you should do is fix the clock. I have a video about it in my channel because, and it turns out that uh, Windows and Linux use um, different time formats for the clocks and uh, the way Linux does it interferes with the way Windows does it. And whenever you go back to Windows, the clock is completely wrong. It shows the wrong time and it, it really confuses Windows. And then it thinks that you have some security problem. So fix that. And, and I found it easier to fix on Linux. So I, I don't really remember the command right now, but I have a video about that, about fixing the time in Linux. And then they will be aligned. And another thing that I learned is that you need to turn off fast boot in Windows. And now you probably already did it in the BIOS settings or the UEFI settings, because chances are that you wouldn't even be able to get to the point where you have working dual boot if you didn't do it. So I guess that you already did it and turned off fast boot, but there is another option in the Windows shutdown options. And this is something that was completely new to me. And you also need to turn this option off. Now, I don't really know the relation between the fast boot in the UEFI settings and the fast boot in the Windows setting, but I did turn it off in Windows, inside Windows. And once it was off in the UEFI settings and it was off in the Windows shutdown settings, along with fixing the clock and after running check disk forward slash F, this seemed to fix the problem and all of the problems were gone, but it was quite a process.